considering how important the Apple Watch might potentially be for the world of watches, I decided to share my very first encounter with one in this video. So I'm on my way to go check out the Apple Watch, and it's interesting because I'm not a Apple fanboy, and I'm not a wearable technology fanboy. I'm a horology fan, and for me, this is more about the the experience of the Apple Watch as a watch. Do I like it as a watch? The wearable technologies aspect of it, you know, that's something that I'm not really invested in. Apple's marketing strategy with this watch is really unusual. They're kind of combining the typical retail experience of buying something online, which is the only way you can get the Apple Watch with, something that is basically taking a page out of high-end horology and appointment. I don't have any reason to think that the appointment's gonna be spectacular. It's only 15 minutes. This is a little counterintuitive and a little hard to explain, but I want the Apple Watch to appeal to me as a watch. That is to say, I want it to actually be something that I'm gonna enjoy the watch experience. I want it to be something that I'll be happy to have on my wrist, happy to use as a timekeeping instrument. The sort of additional functionality above and beyond that is just a perk. Kind of like with the G-Shock, I'm not always checking my barometer readings on my G-Shock. I don't accept the idea that the Apple Watch is not a watch. Like a fitness band is not a watch, really in any sense of the word, it's more of like a functional bracelet. In a lot of ways, the Apple Watch seems to me like a reincarnation of Seiko's TV watch. If that's what it's trying to do though, I'm going to predict that it's going to be a fail, just because the wrist is not a good medium for media. If the Apple Watch isn't going to be something that's dedicated just to bring the media to your wrist, which I really don't think it's actually going to be doing that, then maybe it's going to be something more like the G-Shock, where it's going to be bringing technology that we didn't think was possible to our wrist, and yet it's going to be basically found in a new form factor. Okay, here we are getting to the mall. I'm bringing in some other watches just so I have them for comparison. There's the Apple store down there. So the thing that Apple does with the exclusivity of some of their product reveals is always kind of funny to me. It's like the mix of high and low culture. They're obviously just trying to sell as many of these products as possible. I mean, it's amazing how much I hate malls. Here's the thing. Live recording my commentary was not really welcome, so you're gonna get a voiceover. There's certainly an impressive display of all the varieties of the Apple Watch when you get into the Apple Store. You can see here that they kept all of the watches in a locked drawer. A concierge had to show them all to you. I was primarily interested in the Apple Sport just because it's at the price point that is appealing to me at this point, but I was curious to see what the higher level stainless steel Apple Watches were like. The build quality of the watch head as well as the design of the watch straps are what I was really interested in, knowing full well that I wasn't really going to have a lot of time to get to know the interfaces which are on display there. Up to bat first was a 42mm Apple Sport which is an aluminum case with a gunmetal finish and I have to say that immediately I was impressed with the fit and finish of the head and the positive tactile feedback of the crown and button. We have an Ike Pod style rubber strap here. As far as ergonomics go too, I could tell that they pretty much nailed it right away even though the case back was slightly raised. It was a very comfortable watch wear in all of the strap configurations. The design details and level of fit and finish on the stainless steel bracelet were truly impressive. This was a bracelet that could easily go on a $5,000 watch. I mean, I'm a pretty hairy guy and like once you size that up, it's not going to pinch at all. It's, it's comfortable. I gotta admit, I thought that the bracelet would be one area where there was cost cutting, and that's evident. Yeah. Oh, I'm, God, I'm definitely not. We're, seeing. We're not gonna cost cut anyway. <laughs> For all the fit and finish of the Apple Watch, it was easily as nice as any of the watches in the $1,000 and under price range that I've handled. In fact, the head and bracelet on this combination was so nice that I really thought this is what I was gonna go with until I noticed that the head is actually polished with the bracelet being satin finish. Even though the level of finishing on the bracelet is extremely high, that mismatch is the kind of thing that would keep me away from getting this combination. Nevertheless, as you can see, some of the details in the clasp on this Apple bracelet are very high quality. On the wrist too, it was indeed very comfortable. I have to say that the stainless bracelet isn't the most comfortable option compared to some of these amazing leather options that I was surprised by. The magnetic style 
leather or leatherette bracelets were very impressive on the wrist. They're designed to really conform to the shape of the wrist, and they're kind of infinitely or near infinitely adjustable with the clever use of magnets built into the straps themselves. This is definitely a watch that I was feeling like I would want to buy a few different straps for, especially considering how easy it is to change them. Now the strap on this watch had a very sophisticated magnetic clasp that not only mirrored the shape of the watch, but the use of clever magnets really showed Apple's design prowess. This is not something you'd find on any watch, mechanical or quartz, in this price range. Even the standard style bracelet with a regular hook and loop clasp basically exuded a lot of the sophistication that you would find in a watch bracelet in a much higher price range. Not only did it integrate beautifully with the watch, but you'll notice too that in comparison to the buckles on this Benaros, which is uh, a watch that has a beautiful strap, the actual thickness of the clasp itself was not comparable to the build quality on the Apple. It just shows those details were really paid attention to. Lastly, the Milanese bracelet was one that was also executed to a very fine finish and had a nicely integrated magnetic class system that left me impressed. However, it wasn't as thick as I was hoping and it felt a little unsubstantial compared especially to the stainless steel bracelet. Okay, initial impressions. I just got done trying on a whole bunch. Uh, the watch itself is pretty damn nice. I mean, as far as the construction of those bracelets go, uh, the feel of the, especially the stainless steel head, the guys were all really cool, too, and helpful. It was nice that I, I brought watches to explain my interest and hobby, and they were much more open to me sharing, you know, my perspective on it and why I'm looking at this watch the way that I am. Do I think I'm going to get one? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, the interface itself, as much as I was, you know, enjoying playing with it, I don't really know how much it's going to do. And there's a rub right there. As much as I was impressed with the fit and finish of the watch, as well as many of the design details, as far as the actual new unique functionality of the watch, I really was left shaking my head. I definitely didn't feel like the apps or the extra functionality of the watch above a smartphone was something I needed to have. Working with the display watches, which were actually fully functional, left me feeling unimpressed about the apps and the interface itself. It just seemed like a lot of tapping and fiddling with the little display. As I left the mall, I felt strangely impressed and nonplussed, and walking past a number of mobile phone zombies, knowing full well that I am often one of those zombies, I had to ask, is this phone going to free us for better living, or just enslave us to our devices all the more? So what do you think of the Apple Watch? Have you gotten a chance to hold one in the flesh? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks a lot for your time.